Hello brothers and sisters in Christ and welcome back to another repent slash repentance word study. We're going to turn to the book of Psalms chapter 90. Um, if you've been following along so far we've been learning about the definitions of repent and so far repent has never meant when it's talking about God that God's a sinner. And repent has never meant going from unbelief to belief. So verse 90 we're going to read Chap uh, verse one, chapter 90, verse 1 through 17. And the wind just caught it. As soon as I let go for a second, the wind can get it sometimes. Yeah. Lord, Thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth wherever Thou hast formed the earth and the word, world's world. Even from everlasting to everlasting Thou art God. Thou turnest many to destruction, and sayest, Return ye children of men. For, for a thousand years in thy sight are but a, as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as a, sh as a sleep in the morning. They are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourish. And groweth up in the evening, it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. You know, when they get in trouble. This is talking about um, when they do good, God blesses them. When they do bad, God um, consumes them with his anger and his wrath. Verse 8 Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins, in the light of thy countenance. There's nothing hidden from the Lord. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath, we spend our years in a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, eighty, scores twenty years, um, yet is there strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger, even according to thy fear, so it is thy wrath. So teach us the number of our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long, and let it repent thee concerning thy servants. There's our word, repent. Remember that, repent concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy, and we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servant, and thy glory unto thy, their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. So you go back up to... 13. Return, O Lord, how long, and let it repent thee concerning thy servants. Providential dealings. It's talking about when God punishes the people for turning against them, they're asking for mercy. Okay. If you follow along in the books, uh, the repent studies and the other books, there's times where God said, okay, here's the punishment, and the punishment was supposed to be really great, sometimes to the brink of destroying Israel. And It'll start, and the punishment will go so far, and God will be like, that's enough. I repent, that's enough. So, change in dealings, and we've seen this a lot, but this is their prayer that God will repent. When punishment comes their way, they're praying that God will repent. So, definition. Apply it to, uh, definition number four. Apply to the supreme being to change the course of providential dealings. They're praying that the Lord will have mercy on them. Okay? They get punished that God will bring them back. Let's turn to Psalms 106.45. Psalms 106.45. One hundred six forty-five, but we're going to start in verse 40. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance. What's that? Uh, the Jewish people. And he gave them into the hand of the heathen, 
and they that hated them ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them, and they were brought into subjection unto their hand. Many times did, the, did he deliver them, but they provoked him with their counsel, and were brought low for their iniquities. Punishment. Nevertheless, he regarded their afflictions when he heard their cry. And here's verse 45. And he remembered for them his covenant, and repented according to the multitudes of his mercy. There's times where God was going to destroy the Jewish people, but he stopped. He repented because of the covenant. Okay? Because of the promise he made to Abraham. The promises he made to I, uh, Jacob. Okay? So, once again, providential dealings. This isn't God sinning at all. It's just God saying, I'm going to change my providential dealings. I'm going to punish you like this, and it's supposed to be very severe, but I have mercy. They start crying out to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy on us, have mercy on us. And the Lord repents, and he doesn't go as far as he planned in that punishment. Okay. So, uh, moving along, Psalms 110. Psalms 110. Not too far ahead. We're going to read the whole chapter. We could always sing the whole chapter. <laughs> but um, Psalms 110. The Lord said unto my Lord, Set thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the place, places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore shall he lift up the head. And if you look at verse 4, that's where our word repent is. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. In other words, providential dealings. He's saying, I'm not going to change. Okay, here's the part he's not going to change. Thou art a priesthood forever after the order of Melchizedek. He's saying, I will not change that. That is going to be set forever. And there's a lot of people that ask me questions, and we looked into it a little bit, but Melchizedek, could this be another... Uh, reference to Jesus. Um, okay. Because it's pretty single, uh, single, singular, if I can say it. But right now, for repent, the context of this is providential dealings. Jesus isn't going to change, or Jesus, well, he is God. God is not going to change his mind on that. So, once again, God's not a sinner. He just changes his providential dealings. He's going to do it this way and he's going to change. That one was saying he's doing it this way and he's not going to change. Okay. Last place we're going to. Psalms 135. So shoot over to Psalms 135. And we only have to read the actual verse. 135, 14. For the Lord will judge his people and he will repent himself concerning his servants. Okay. Repent. Change in providence. He's going to be judging people. And he's going to be changing his mind sometimes. Like uh, when it said he repented that Saul uh, would be king. It's he, cha he, he did, like I said, some people will say, well, he changed his mind. He changed his providence because what happened? He made, king, uh, he made David king. Saul was supposed to be king, live until he's old and dead and be king, but he, he sinned against God, so God repented of making him king, and he replaced him with another king. So right here when it says, I believe, for the Lord will judge his people and he will repent himself concerning his servants. Okay, uh, All through the Bible you'll see that he'll choose somebody to do something and the sinful flesh of man uh, they'll fall into sin and temptation, and God will repent himself of that person that he's using, and he'll find somebody else to use. Um, a good example would be 
uh, well, uh, King Saul, and then you had King David replace him, but also um, Daniel. Um, no, Samuel. I think it's Samuel, where the priest, the father, uh, gosh, I wish I could remember the names, but bottom line, you had the father's sons in the priesthood were doing wicked things, and the, so the father called him out, but he didn't do anything about it. So God's like, I'm going to grab uh, Saul, uh, Samuel, and Samuel's going to be my man from now on. So um, I'm not saying the word repent was there, but it's one of those things where God will take somebody that's a servant and say, okay, I can't use you anymore. I'm going to use this person. There's times in our lives, and I'm trying not to go, go into a study, but where God's going to say, I can't use you right now. Maybe it's because you're not ready. Or maybe it's because you're falling into sin and temptation. I've been struggling with it this week. Uh, I struggle with it all the time, but big time this week. So, as we see there, his repent there is change in providence of choosing who's going to be his servants. Okay, how he judges Israel, like the punishment. When there's judgment, there's punishment. Okay, sometimes there's going to be judgment and there's going to be rewards, but you're still going to suffer losses, like when we go to the uh, white throne judgment. We're still going to be judged but our works are going to be judged, and we're going to suffer a lot of losses. So, that's our re uh, repent study for the book of Psalms. Um, just uh, remember, words have meaning. One of the big things about this ministry that God has uh, blessed me with being a part of is words have meaning. Every one of these times, a change in providence. And every one of these times, not once is it saying that God himself is a sinner because he repents. Remember, there's some times where a word can be used, it has a fundamental definition, and it can be used different ways, and that fundamental, fund, <laughs> the foundation of the definition is the same, but it's how it's used is different. But a lot of times, a lot of words have multiple definitions. And don't fall for these uniform translations where it's all got to have the same definition. Repentance means you're a sinner, and you're repenting of your sin every time. So when God repents, He's a sinner. That was the whole point of doing this study, was to prove that God's not a sinner, and that repentance, when it comes to us, has to do with having sorrow for sinning against God. And repentance can sometimes mean a change of mind, okay? I was going to do this, but I repented, and now I'm doing something else. So we changed our mind. Uh, change of mind. But when it comes to us and salvation, that's the whole point of doing this study. But, thank you for watching. And we'll see you in the next book for repent slash repentance word study.